Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the Isamaya Lips Collection of lip balms and a lipstick. So I have the one lipstick in the collection as well as four of the lip balms and I have been super impressed with these formulas. So this collection was first introduced in spring of 2023, but the products were only available in a really heavy metal case that was supposed to be like an artwork and that was shaped like male genitalia and they cost $95 each. So I was not interested in picking that up at the time and I don't know very many other people that picked it up. But I am really happy to report that they are now available in regular metal cases uh, without any extra case required. And uh, there are six new shades of the lip balm and then there are two existing shades and then there's also the lipstick and I think that all of these are really, really impressive and they taste good to me, they feel good to me, they have good ingredient lists as far as I'm concerned. And so I haven't seen too many people uh, know about these products, so I thought that I would do a video introducing them to you. So of the lip balms, I have the new shades Mortal, Follower, Retrograde, and then the existing shade of Vanity, and I also have the bright red shade of Cardinal in the lipstick, and so I'll be showing all of these to you. In addition, I went through my collection and I picked out a bunch of other comfortable red lipsticks that I thought that I would uh, share with you as a comparison so you can see what you think of uh, this lipstick compared to other ones that I have also enjoyed. So first, a little bit of information about me. I'm 59 years old and I have sensitive skin and I've never had any kind of cosmetic procedures like injections or surgery and I don't intend to do that. And most of the time I just spend five to 10 minutes a day putting on makeup. And so those are the kind of makeup looks that I tend to talk about on this channel. And over the past three years, I've tried more than a thousand makeup products. And so I have a pretty good basis of comparison for everything that I try on in this channel. There are certain ingredients that I have found that always do irritate my skin, and these are ingredients that are known to irritate many other people's skin in general. So I just don't talk about products that contain those ingredients on this channel. And until about a year or so ago, I really had never focused at all on trying to wear red lipsticks. I always felt like they didn't really look right on me. I have what some people would say is a soft autumn complexion, and that usually means that I'm looking for colors that are a bit softer. But over the past year or so, I've tried on a whole bunch of brighter red lipsticks to see if I could make them work for me. And I'm starting to feel like some of them do look okay on me at least. And some people really like the way that they look so you can see what you think in this video. And so now a little bit of information about Isamaya. So this is a makeup artist whose full name is Isamaya French with two F's at the beginning and apparently that is actually her real name. And she's 34 years old and she grew up in England and she is, even though she looks like a really kind of a sweet and a nice person, she is actually described as the industry's most subversive makeup artist. And she has worked with and traveled around with uh, figures like Rihanna, Madonna, Bella Hadid, and Kendall Jenner. And she first developed Byredo's makeup collection and she served as the global uh, beauty director for Burberry Beauty, and she's also consulted for Tom Ford, YSL, and Christian Louboutin. So she is kind of a big name in the makeup industry, it seems. And she's also, in addition to being a makeup artist, she thinks of herself apparently as a visual artist, and she says that uh, it is her goal to use the body as a, a base for a uh, creating works of art, and it also says on her website that her goal is to stretch the limitations of beauty. So Isamea as a beauty brand was launched in 2022, and it says that the goal was to be able to create makeup without the boundaries that most makeup companies adhere to. And so the first collection was the Industrial Collection, and that kind of had a kink or a BDSM theme to it. And then her second collection was the Wild Star Collection, which had an equestrian theme. And one thing that she's always been known for is creating these really, really beautiful cases that were like works of art in themselves. And so, of course, that means that the prices of the products 
were also very, very high. Now, for me, I'm much more interested in product quality and whether or not the product irritates my skin and whether or not it performs well for me than I am in the case that the makeup comes in. But I do think that it looks like some of these products do come in attractive cases. In terms of the formulas, it does look to me like most of the formulas include ingredients that I would not be able to tolerate, so I have not really explored this uh, line. There are a couple of other products from the past that I have been interested in buying and that I think that I might be able to tolerate. Uh, the original industrial color palette, that one looks like the ingredients might be okay for me, but uh, the subsequent 2.0 palette was more problematic in terms of the ingredients. I was a little bit interested in the highlighter and the shadows from the Wild Star collection. Uh, they do include talc and synthetic colors, but I still think I might be able to tolerate them. And I was interested enough in the lip liner from the previous collection, the Wild Star collection, that I did go ahead and buy this. And this was kind of a disaster. Uh, this lip, lip liner broke on me uh, three times and I really wasn't able to put it on my lips at all and I was using it so gently. So I did contact the company and they agreed to take it back. I don't know if... Uh, if it's just something about this particular pencil or if uh, it's an issue with, with the line in general. This is a pencil that clicks up and doesn't click down, so that's another issue with it. But I wasn't really that impressed with it, but maybe I just have a flaw in mine. So in this context, the fact that I like the formula for this lipstick and these lip balms has been really, really surprising to me. But they do have a really good ingredient list, and they have performed as well for me as any lip products that I have really used. So I am super impressed by them. So the Lips Collection, as I said, was introduced in the beginning of 2023, and she said that she was playing off the sensuality of the lips and that the case uh, was supposed to be a strong graphic element. And they originally released it with two colors. One was a bright red lipstick, very, very bright, and then the other one was a clear gloss with black pearls in it. And the idea with the black gloss is that it was just supposed to create just a little bit of a change to your lips, make them look a little bit more purpley or almost like bruised, but it's really not supposed to be noticeable. And that was supposed to be something that anyone could wear, regardless of whether or not they ever wore any other kind of makeup. So her thought was that some people might want to buy that case and have an excuse to carry it around. And so if there was a, a basically a clear gloss with just a little bit of interest value in it, that that would give people an excuse. And then later on in the year, she added a bright pink lip balm called Flamingo, and that one looks very pretty also. So usually when Isamea releases a new beauty line, a lot of people on YouTube or other social media platforms do review it. But in the case of this Isamea Lips uh, collection, I really saw almost no reviews for the product, and people would bring it up, but only very briefly and then move on. The only reviews that I actually did see it see about it were from a couple of, I guess we would say, edgier people. So one was uh, Jeffree Star and one was uh, Teresa's Dead, who was a little bit more goth and uh, a little bit uh, more flamboyant. And so those people, uh, they seemed a little bit bemused by the case, but both of those people did say that they thought the formula of both the lip balm and especially the lipstick were really impressive to me. And so that made me feel like if I could get my hands on this particular product uh, without it uh, having to buy that expensive case, that it might be worth trying. And that is definitely what has turned out to be the case. And then in the, I guess, the middle of November in 2023, they released six additional lip balms and everything is available in these plain metal cases. Uh, I think the cases actually are quite nice. If you have ever used the... RMS lip balm, the Tinted Daily Lip Balm, these cases are almost exactly like those. So I really think that these are much nicer cases than most of the plastic cases that products come in. I would much rather them be in these, these lovely metal cases. Uh, they're very simple, but I think that they're very nice. And there is a tiny little line drawing on these, this case uh, that corresponds to the original metal case. Uh, but this is not something that I ever notice because it is so faint and small unless I'm really looking for it. 
Now, I think the only downside to these cases is that there is no label on the outside of the case that tells you what uh, lipstick is inside of it. So if you buy more than one, as I have, then you will uh, be confused about which one you're going to be opening unless you do something like put frog tape on the outside of it. So let's talk first about the lip balms and then we'll move on to that lipstick. So this is a really clean formula and it doesn't have any flavor at all in it, no scent of any kind and I find that it tastes really good, it feels really good to me and it also feels very good on my lips. It's a little bit of a sticky formula but not too sticky, it's certainly not so sticky that it's annoying but it's sticky enough that I think it um, stays on my lips really well. So if I put it on then I can go through quite a bit uh, of time before I need to reapply it. And all of the colors of this lip balm have little pearls in them. So the whole idea of this is that if your lips are dry, then it's supposed to look like you're getting a little bit of reflectiveness off of your lips and that they're moist in addition to giving you moisture. And really, I think that this is one of the best lip balm formulas that I have tried. Now I'm comparing it to things like the Hourglass Phantom Lip uh, Balms or the NARS Afterglow Sensual Shine Lip Balms or the Rowan Tinted Lip Oil Balm. And I found that all of those have been really good, but I find that this one is just as good or maybe better in terms of how much I want to use it and how I think it looks when I'm wearing it. So now let's talk about the shades of the lip balms that I have. So the first one is Vanity, and this is the first one that was introduced back in the spring. So this is a clear lip balm with uh, just some black pearls in it, so it makes your lips look just a little bit more purple or a little bit, a slightly more bruised, like you've maybe been kissing uh, when you put it on. And I do think that the difference is noticeable, but it's not really noticeable. The other thing that I have done with this is to put it on over a lip pencil or maybe a lipstick, but more like a lip pencil, something that is dry and that has color that's a little bit flat. And if I put this on over the top of it, then it changes the color just slightly and makes it look a little bit more maybe modern or a little bit interesting and certainly less flat. And it also makes that kind of thing more comfortable to wear. So I have a whole bunch of lip pencils in my collection and I feel like I don't usually get that much use out of them unless I'm putting them on underneath lipstick. But I think that uh, with, with a product like this, it kind of makes me want to take out those lip pencils and to use them on a more regular basis because they do look so nice when I put this over the top. And the next color that I have is called Mortal. And this is supposed to be a beautiful nude glowy balm. So it's a little bit pink, uh, but it's, it's not really a dramatic color. It mostly is giving my lips some more shine. So sometimes if I put a lip pencil on my lips that is too nude, then it looks really uh, kind of flat. But if I put this on over the top of it, then I feel like it gives my face um, some extra dimension in life, which I think is very attractive. And then the third product is Follower, and it is supposed to be basically a nude color with just a bit of a touch of brown to it. So it is one of those uh, throwback 90 shades. Here I am putting it over a shade of lip pencil from House Labs uh, that is called Maple Matte. So they have these lip pencils that really are more like lip crayons. And I really do like the colors in these, but they do look a little bit flat. But I do think that when I put this follower over it, it was it makes it into a much prettier shade that, that looks like my lips are hydrated and pretty without there being too much glossiness to it. So the last shade that I have is Retrograde, and this is supposed to be based on a particular flower, and it's supposed to have a color that is between a cherry and a plum. So it's a little bit of a kind of a black honey type of a shade because you're getting this uh, burgundy type of a color, but it's sheer so you can see your lip color through it as well. And I find this one to be really, really nice in terms of just putting it on, even if I don't have anything on under it. It does give my lips enough life to them that I feel like I could be on video camera and have them look nice or go out and not need to do anything else. But I do think that this works well over other products in addition to that. So the one that I put on in the video footage was an old pencil from MAC, and that is called Night Moth, and it is quite dark. Um, 
lot darker than I usually would wear. It's kind of a, more of a dark berry color or almost like a goth type color. But when I put this retrograde over the top of it, I think it's actually um, really wearable for me and I think it looks uh, kind of pretty and uh, kind of interesting looking. And then there are a few more balm shades that I have not yet picked up, although I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up getting them. Uh, the one is called Flamingo. Uh, this is the one that's previously released. It's supposed to be a modern take on the classic pink lip. It looks like that one's pretty p bright pink, which I think that I actually would like, and so that probably should have been one that I have picked up already. Uh, the second one is Thorns, and that is supposed to be a beautiful muted dusty rose. And the third one is Justice, and she said that one is supposed to be totally transparent, but then she said that she couldn't help herself and she put in a little bit of iridescence so that it, it looks a little bit on the shimmery side and interesting, but it also is supposed to be especially hydrating. And then the last one is called Pantomime, and she said that it's supposed to be show-stopping. It uses a slightly different formula. This one has metallic pearls in it, so it's supposed to give your lips a metallic look, and you can wear it over other kinds of lipsticks, especially matte lipsticks, and uh, get more of a metallic look on your lips. And if you would like to see these other shades, then I would suggest taking a look at the video that Isamaya herself uh, tried on the different kinds of lipsticks because they do look really good on her and they look a lot more like uh, they look in the real world when she tries them on in this video than they do on the website. I think that these website pictures are really not very good. Maybe they took them in harsh studio lighting, but in any case, I don't think that you are going to get a really good representation of what they look like if you just look at the website. And so now let's talk about the lipstick. And so I went ahead and put that on and then you can see me applying it in the footage that I insert. So this is supposed to be a really, really highly saturated lipstick, which it certainly is. And it's supposed to be right in the middle between being cool and being warm. And it is supposed to be so pigmented that you really don't have to work to put it on and that you should be able to put it on uh, with a uh, full coverage in just one swipe. And I absolutely think that is the case too. I have been uh, trying to be very, very gentle in terms of how much I put on because I would like for it to be a little bit lighter in color, but this is certainly a very well highly saturated lipstick, even compared to all of the other red lipsticks that are in my collection. But the other thing about this lipstick that is kind of shocking is how easy it is to put on and how it kind of grips to the lips. So I don't feel like when I put it on that there's really much of a chance that I'm going to mess it up. And it also seems that even if I don't put any lip liner under it, this really stays in place for quite a while. But it's a, certainly not a matte lipstick. It has a lot of hydration to it. It has a lot of really high quality oils in it, like cherry seed oil, and it really feels very, very good on my lips. So what I'm trying to mostly compare it to in this video is other lipsticks that are comfortable, because there certainly are a lot of uncomfortable red lipsticks on the planet that you can get a lot of long wear from. But I think that the thing that's really, uh, really important about this one is that it really does feel good on the lips. So what I would really like is for her to branch out and to make some other lipstick colors because even though I think that I will wear this red lipstick from time to time, or at least I will experiment with doing that, if I had other lipsticks that were in this same formula, and hopefully she can do it rather than someone else, I think that I, that would be really my favorite lipsticks of all. So one thing that I will say is that what I have found is that if I'm going to wear red lipstick, then I kind of need to do the rest of my makeup a little bit differently. So the French girl vibe is obviously that you just put on red lipstick and you kind of don't worry about everything else except for maybe mascara. I feel like my complexion is so low contrast that if I do that, the lipsticks really kind of walk away with everything. And that is really all that you see. So I do a few things. I usually put on uh, eyebrows that are a little bit darker of a color. So in this case, I got out my Westman Atelier eyebrow pencil and that is usually a little too dark for me and I used that and I used a darker brow gel and I put on a little bit of black eyeliner and black mascara. 
The other thing that I thought I would show you just as a side note is this little quad from Pat McGrath that I uh, used for this video. So this is a quad that I picked up uh, as my first Pat McGrath graph a foray into trying her eyeshadows and I do like the formula a lot. Uh, this is a palette that has uh, three different colors of uh, kind of shimmery gold type colors and then there is a pink color down here and I picked this up at about half price and I do really like it and it's not on sale anymore except that I just saw that they are reintroducing this for Chinese New Year in special packaging. So I am kind of happy to be able to talk about it on this channel. A lot of people criticize Pat McGrath for bringing out the same palettes over and over again and charging a high price for them. But in this case, I think that probably within a month or two, this will go down in price also. So if you're interested in this, and I do think it's very pretty uh, with these these gold shades that they work well as a topper that uh, you'll probably be able to get it at a good discount. So here is what the four shades look like. I just kind of smudged them on my hand. So I think that they're very pretty colors. And I just took one of the shades and I put it over the top of my existing eye look. I had on just uh, a little bit of a Victoria Beckham contour pencil and a little bit of her trench to serve as a base. And so I think that if I take that and I add a little bit of this uh, gold stuff over the top of it, then I think that that makes an appropriate look to go with a red lipstick, especially for Chinese New Year or for Christmas or really any kind of a party type of a thing. So I still don't feel entirely comfortable with wearing red lipsticks, even though I have a little bit stronger makeup on my eyes than usual, but I think that I'm feeling more comfortable about it than I used to. And I do think that red lipstick is good uh, as I get older to bring a little bit more life to my face, and I kind of feel like I'm a grown-up now that I'm sort of expected to be wearing red lipstick by some people, maybe. So in the video footage, I did put on the Ismea Cardinal Red Lipstick, uh, first without a lip liner, and then I used my Victoria Beckham Red Lip Liner. I don't think it's really necessary. I think you can get a little bit more of a distinct line if you use the red liner. But in terms of it lasting, I think it lasts quite well, even if it doesn't have a lip liner under it. And I also think that uh, I can put it on really cleanly and neatly without necessarily needing to uh, line my knit lips. So in terms of lip liners, my favorite ones tend to be the Victoria Beckham and maybe even more so the Chanel ones. So I don't have a red Chanel lip liner yet, but I'm thinking about getting one. And then maybe I will do a whole video on Chanel soon, so you can watch for that. So in general, I think that this is a really easygoing but very well behaved lipstick. Uh, it tastes good to me. It feels good to me. It doesn't have any added taste at all and the ingredients do taste fine to me and I feel like it stays on my lips uh, for quite a long period of time. I feel like if I'm going to uh, drink something when I'm wearing it I don't feel like it's all going to come off and make a big mess and so I think that if you're really a, a very interested in red lipsticks that this is really the red lipstick that I would be suggesting that you try. And even for me as someone that is uh, just a, a little interested in, in uh, red lipsticks, red lipstick curious, that I, uh, it kind of makes me want to wear red lipstick more just because I have this formula. So I do have a little collection of other red lipsticks, some of which are somewhat similar to this. So I thought what I would do is try all of these on so that you could compare them to one another and to this Isamea lipstick, at least on camera, to see what you thought of them and which ones you think look best on me or which ones might be most interesting to you. And really all of these are lipsticks that I would be willing to wear, so they're all uh, have formulas that are, are have pretty good ingredients in them. They taste good to me. Most of them are unscented and unflavored, and they have all performed well for me. So I'm not putting in here a bunch of lipsticks that I don't like. I'm just putting in ones that I really think are actually a good options. So the first one is from Lisa Eldridge, and this is the luxuriously Lucent formula, which is my favorite formula from Lisa Eldridge. Uh, this lipstick is $36, so it's uh, only slightly more expensive. And this is really uh, of the 
lipsticks that are out there. This is really my favorite uh, light lipstick formula, or at least it has been uh, up until now. And I think that this formula has worked really, really well for me. And I think in this red lipstick, it's also been a, quite a nice formula. It tastes good. Uh, I think that the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Matte lipsticks are a little bit uh, fussier. They have a tendency, at least for me, to break. I've had a couple of them break immediately after receiving them. And so I'm a little bit more worried about that one, and I also feel like they're a little more formal, whereas these uh, luxuriously lucent ones are a little more casual and something that I can really wear every day. And Lisa Eldridge describes this palazzo shade as a rich, deep, neutral wet red inspired by the richly decorated palaces of Italy. So I think it's a very similar color to the Isamaya one, and it's similar in texture. And it, it may be the same factory, I would not be surprised. I think that the Isamea ones are definitely more highly pigmented, and I think they're a little bit more sticky, so therefore they are a little bit more likely to remain on the lips for a longer period of time. And uh, I think that the Lisa Eldridge ones are a good alternative and ones that I've enjoyed wearing until now, but I think the, the Isamea ones are, are a little more impressive especially if you want a highly pigmented lipstick. And then another lipstick formula that I really like is from Pat McGrath, and this is their Satin Allure Lipstick. So these come in little bitty cases that uh, seem like to some people that they're not a luxury lipstick, but I think that the formula is really terrific and they are full-size lipsticks. And the price for those is $30. Uh, this is the Crimson Ecstasy shade, and I think this is also very similar. I think this goes on very easily. I don't think that the Pat McGrath one is quite as sticky as the Isamea one, but I still think it performs really well. I think this is a really underrated line. I think that a lot of people have been a little skeptical about Pat McGrath because she seems to be moving from being a super luxury brand to more like a, a mainstream, middle-of-the-road, uh, high-end brand. And I really like uh, her lipsticks a lot. I especially like this one. And at the moment, uh, you can periodically have been able to get things on the Pat McGrath website for like 30% off. So if you can get that, then this lipstick becomes a true bargain in my view. It's a really high quality lipstick. Now, another lipstick that I really liked uh, is from Merit, and that is called Aperitif. Uh, the Merit lipsticks are $26, so that's a reasonable price. Merit introduced uh, this particular lipstick as part of a Christmas set last year, and then they introduced it as a uh, limited edition last summer, and it sold out really fast. And now they say they're not bringing it back again, which I think is kind of crazy because there's an awfully lot of people that keep... Uh, being very disappointed and writing on their Facebook page and their Instagram page that they really need to bring it back. So I am one of the people that really would like to see that brought back. I really like the Merit formula in general. I think that this was a very wearable red color. It's not quite as pigmented as the Yisamaya one, but I feel like it was that was one of the things that I really liked about it is that it was a little bit easygoing and that is a starter red lipstick for me. It made me want to try more red lipsticks on. So I hope that people will uh, write to them and uh, tell them to bring it back because uh, I really miss that one uh, if it's going to be gone forever. The next one I have here is the Victoria Beckham Posh Lipstick Pop for $38. These are small lipsticks and they're kind of easygoing and Victoria Beckham almost never wears a red lip herself. And so my guess was that her red lipsticks probably would be fairly easygoing and that I would be able to enjoy wearing them even though I wasn't a, an experienced red lipstick wearer. And that was absolutely true. That turned out to be a good introduction to red lipsticks also. And I think that these taste good. They're not as hydrating. I don't think they're as sticky as the Isamaya. I don't feel like they're as good for my lips. But I do think that they're very nice uh, in terms of the formula. They don't have the as many high quality oils in them, but I do think that they're very nice. The color is about the same as those other ones. It's described as a cherry red, so it's really not warm and it's not cool. And I think that the Victoria Beckham Lip Liner in red, it works well with her lipstick. It works well with that Lisa Eldridge 
uh, Palazzo lipstick uh, in the Merit one and with the new Isamaya one. And then House Labs has a line of lip crayons that I think are really overlooked most of the time. And these are called Le Monster, and there's a whole bunch of different colors. And so I have two of the colors that are on the red side. And I think that both of these have worked really well, well for me. And I think they are a little bit matte, uh, but they are very easy going in the way that these other lipsticks are easy going and they go on really easily. They feel really good on my lips. I think if I put a little bit of a lip gloss over them, then they feel even better to me, but they still are, are very nice lip uh, shades. And I think that both of these are pretty good colors. And those have ceramides and peptides and sodium hyaluronate and mango seed oil in them. So all of those are ingredients that I think are really good for the lips and that that's one of the reasons that I like them so much. BK Beauty is a brush company mostly and I do really like their brushes and they have a few makeup products including a line of lipsticks. So there is one lipstick that is called Confidence and so I think that that is a pretty good price. And I think that especially for the price that this one has behaved pretty well, it feels pretty good on my lips. I don't think that it's in the same category as the Isamea in terms of how well it performs, but I uh, have not minded wearing it at all and I think it's kind of a uh, nice looking. And Jones Road has a line of little lip tints. Uh, these are mostly in really bright colors and the one that is the bright red is called Ruby and I do think that this is very pretty also and that uh, it's also kind of a middle of the road red that uh, goes on pretty well and it, it feels good and it's not uh, something that you need to worry about a whole lot and it's very easy going. So I do like that about it. I don't think too many people know about this particular line, but this is a line of lipsticks from La Perla. Now La Perla makes expensive Italian uh, lingerie, and so uh, cosmetics is a totally different area for them. And this is available at Nordstrom, and the one that I have is a uh, lip balm that is called a, a satin lip balm, and it's in the shade Bitten, and so it's a little bit more easygoing than a red lipstick or a real red lipstick. Uh, and so that makes it a lot easier for me to wear, something that I'm able to wear more often. Uh, these are $54, so they're very, very expensive. And I don't uh, mind this particular product because it, it does fit in that category of lipsticks that are really easy for me to wear, but that it still make it seem that I'm wearing a red lipstick but it's not really overwhelming my face. They also make a line of real lipsticks that are in various shades of red and that are, um, some of them are much more neutral, some of them are in, in different undertones. And so if you're interested in a, a red lipsticks, then that could be one to try too, but they are pretty pricey. But at least they are lipsticks that I have enjoyed using and they taste good to me. They do have a little bit of vanilla in them, but it hasn't been so much to be bothersome to me. Fashion Fair is a company that goes back to the 1960s and it uh, went out of business and then it was uh, repurchased and restarted and so they have a line of lipsticks. I kind of liked uh, one of their lipsticks, one that's more like on the, the pinkish uh, movies type side, so I thought I would pick up this one as well. I think this is a nice lipstick in terms of how it feels for me, but it does seem to be a lot more inclined to be messy. So I have to be very, very gentle with it. So you might be able to see in the video footage that I'm being really cautious when I put these on my lips because otherwise they do tend to turn into a big mess. So I think that the formula is not quite as uh, sophisticated as some of these others in terms of it's sort of just uh, taking care of things itself and so that you don't have to worry about the fact that you're wearing red lipsticks. But otherwise it tastes good to me, it feels good to me, and uh, I kind of like the way that it looks also. And RMS introduced this year a whole line of uh, bright lipsticks that are, uh, I guess, squalane based. And so they come in these tubes that you can only click up and you can't click down. 
and they're all bright colors and they feel really good on my lips. They taste really good there. They have kind of a um, wet type of a sensation to them, which I think is, is interesting. Uh, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to. They don't really have a bright red lipstick in these. They have one that's uh, more like a tawny red and I think this is easier for me to wear. It actually is one that I feel like I can wear anytime. Um, so that is something that I have enjoyed wearing, but I'm a little surprised that there's no uh, straight up uh, red lipstick. There is one that's kind of an orange red that's uh, quite bright. And I like this a lot and it wears down fairly quickly to being just a stain though. So that's another thing that's different about it. That it's, uh, if you're looking for a lipstick of the kind that Isamea is offering, then this is much, much different. But if you want to get a hint of it being a red lipstick, then I think this is a really excellent one. I have really enjoyed it. Another formula that is very comfortable and very easy going, and this one is not too expensive, it's only $18, is from Glossier, their Glossier Ultra Lips. Now they don't really have a regular red color in this either. They have one that's more like a reddish pink color, but I think that it's also very attractive and it kind of gives me the impression that I'm wearing a red lipstick and it certainly is comfortable. And it certainly is easygoing in terms of how it goes on. And I have a lot of positive things to say about these Ultra Lip formulas. I wear them a lot and I've really enjoyed them. And then just for the sake of comparison, I pulled out my uh, NARS Power Matte Lipstick in the shade Dragon Girl. So this is a lipstick that really doesn't seem to be in the same category as the Isamaya lipstick at all. So even though it goes on as if it's a soft, sort of easygoing lipstick, uh, within a few seconds it kind of freezes. So it's really gets a lot drier and a lot more immovable, which can be a really good thing in a lipstick, but it also is not really the kind of um, easygoing type of a formula as the Isamaya. But it is a really bright lipstick and it does certainly give a, a lot of punch to the lips. With this one, what I have found is that if I put one of the Isamaya lip balms, especially that black one, over the top, then it becomes much more wearable and it seems to stay in place quite well, even with that balm over the top. And I haven't necessarily found that other lip glosses over the top of it have worked all as well for me or all that well. And so I am a little bit more inclined to start wearing these Power Matte lipsticks with one of those balms over them because I think that they work really, really well together. And the last one that I have just for fun is from Tower 28. So they have a line of like lip crayons and some of them are not pigmented at all. And then there's two of them that are very, very pigmented. And one is kind of an orange color. And this one is, I guess, a kind of a pinkish red, but it, it gives the hint of it being a red lipstick. So this is certainly an easygoing uh, red color and it feels good on my lips. It certainly doesn't look as serious as the Isamea one, but it is one that sometimes I reach for when I want to have that same kind of a look. So I would like to know from you if you ever do wear red lipstick, uh, which ones you have liked. Maybe there are some out there that I have missed. I am not interested in them if they have fragrance in them, and an awfully lot of the high-end lipsticks do have synthetic fragrance in them. But otherwise, uh, as long as they have a decent ingredient list, then I would like to try out some more. So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. And if you have any comments on this particular line of lipsticks, or if you happen to have tried any of them, then please let me know in the comments section. In addition, if you have yet to subscribe to this channel, then please go ahead and do that because I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. So I'm really happy about that. And once I get to a thousand subscribers, then hopefully uh, Google and YouTube will start giving me a little bit of money. So that certainly could help. So thank you very much for watching and Coco and I love you very much. Goodbye.